So guys, in identified asset, there is one more, uh, one more small special case here. First listen, I'll make you read later on. Sir, this is substantive substitution rights of supplier. Sir, this fellow is a supplier of the asset, he is the owner of the asset. He is giving the asset to this fellow who is a user. At the time of giving the asset to the user, the contract if it mentions that, the supplier any time can replace this asset with another asset. That means, this fellow will be using the asset. Any time this fellow can come, take this asset back, in place of this asset, another asset he will substitute and says enjoy with this. If that right supplier is having, then even though technically you have an identified asset, the standard says there is no lease agreement. Asset identified, but what is the fun of identifying the asset? If the supplier is having a right to replace the asset when he, any time he wants, for example sir, you gave me an asset or you, you decided to give me an asset. In contract law very clearly, asset ka color, brand, capacity, everything I highlighted. But in agreement law also we wrote that any time when the supplier wants, he can change this asset and in place of this he can give a, another asset to me. The moment a substitution right is there with the supplier, any time it is as good as even though you have identified the asset, there is no point of identifying the asset. Why? After so much of effort I identified the asset, ultimately if that fellow can replace this asset, then it is technically it is not a identified asset. Means, of course, contract law, we mentioned we identified physically distinct, all these are there. But if supplier can change this asset and give another asset in place of this, then you are defeating the entire purpose of identifying the asset. Uh, purpose of identifying the asset. So, it is as good as there is no lease transaction. But, we are talking about substitution rights. Now, what is this substantive substitution rights? Substantive means, hereafter, um, till now, I think uh, no standard law wording has been used, substantive. Hereafter, many places it keeps on coming here, 115 standard, consolidation standard, um, income taxes standard, many places will this word substantive will keep on coming. Hereafter, substantive wherever it comes, you understand it as considerable. You can say significant also, but considerable is more appropriate, sir. Means worth consideration, material, significant, considerable, these are all various meanings you can attribute to the term called a substantive. Now, okay, supplier is having a right, okay. Just because supplier has a right, automatically we will not say this is not a lease. We have to go and see whether this right is a substantive or not. If there are substantive substitution rights, then there is no lease. So when will I know whether it is substantive or not? Substantive, that means substitution right of supplier is substantive if again two conditions for this. The two conditions are first of all a supplier should have practical ability to substitute plus number two there is a economic incentive to the supplier to substitute. What this means is, suppose sir, you gave me a car. E car, you have a right to substitute it any time. That's what you wrote in the contract. What the standard says is substitution rate is okay. But if the substitution rate is substantive, then there is no lease. Sir, how will you know whether it is substantive or not? Go and ask yourself, if the supplier wants to replace the asset, is he having the ability to substitute? Example, 
His supplier has got 10 indigo cars, sir. One car he gave it to me. Any time he wants, can he replace this? The ability is he having? Yes. Why? Because he is having 10 cars. One car I took. Nine, still nine other indigo cars are there. This car he can take. Another car he can give. Practical ability should be there. Plus number two. Economic incentive to the supplier should be there. Sir, if he is going to do this, he is going to have some benefit out of this substitution. Why the second condition is also kept, sir? If he is having ability, that's enough. No, why benefit also? Means the standard wants to be very sure that substitution is very highly likely. Suppose, sir, I'll put it in a little different example. Understand correctly. Sir, I am very strong. I have a power to hit somebody. Okay? I know, listen. I have power to hit somebody. In fact, anybody. Okay, this much power I have. But I am not angry on them. What are the chances of I going and beating them up? Less. Ah, are you are sad, sir. Okay, listen. Next. I am very angry on somebody. I want to hit them, but I am very weak. If I go there, they will beat me more. So, what are the chance of me going and fighting with them? Less. But I am having strength also, anger also. Then the chance of me going and avenging is very, very high. Exactly same thing, sir. Suppler should have the ability to substitute and because of doing the substitution, he should be able to benefit because of it. Then, what are the chance of substitution? Highly likely. So, the asset what the lessee is taking today is highly likely to be substituted. There is no identified asset and there is no lease transaction. Are you intention? Okay, next, another example. <coughs> Sir, I took a machinery from you only. A machine is highly customized machine, sir. Highly customized machine to suit only my requirements. But for the sake of it, the contract law, substitution right you are having and we wrote. Now, first condition generally will not be satisfied here. Why? Practical ability to substitute means you will take away this asset from me. E place lo again another asset you have to give. Another asset like this is not there readily. You have to again build it, customize it to my requirements and then give it. The chance of that happening is less. Car it is a substitute asset, sir. Customized machinery ka substitution is not that likely. So, first condition only you fail off. Next. I took an asset from you and I stay in a city which is very, very far from where you stay. If you want to substitute this asset, you yourself have to come, pick this up, take it back and deliver a new asset to me to my satisfaction. The chance of this happening is less likely. So, practical ability means what is the realistic possibility of this happening. Number two, by doing this, is he having some incentive? Who? Supplier should have some incentive. These two points are satisfied. He is having strength also. He is having emotionally anger also. Paka he will hit. Like that, Practical ability to substitute economic incentive to economic incentive because of substitution. If both are there, then supplier is likely to substitute the asset what he gave to you. In that case, poor fellow, look at this boy, sir. ROU asset account debit to lease liability entry, he wrote. But the asset is going to go away in that place, another asset is going to come. What is the fun of recording this entry for this particular asset? So, standard says there is no lease here. Hmm? That's also so. This is B point is over. No C point, you right. Hmm. Economic incentive means the benefit to the supplier should exceed the cost of substitution. Cost of substitution means he will incur certain cost to replace the asset, like transportation cost or again doing customizations from another asset and all. E cost can't he asset he is taking from me and giving it to somebody else or he is going to use it for some other purpose or some other purpose low benefit should be exceeding the cost what he is incurring to substitute the asset. Then we will say that there is a motive for them. Power you are having, motive also you should have. Now motive is what here? Profit motive. Now here one genuine doubt will come if you really put yourself in the shoes of customer. Sir, that fellow is having right to substitute. Okay. Whether it is substantive or not, I have to check. Because if it is substantive, there is no lease. Lease accounting will not apply for me. No, so I have to check whether it is substantive or not. If substantive, if two conditions are satisfied. In that first condition is, 
lesser having practical ability to substitute. Fine. So it's a very generally available asset, sir. He will easily substitute. So ability is there. Second one, whether he is having incentive to substitute or not, as a customer, how will I know? If you are the owner of the asset, you will know whether if you if you do the substitution of the asset, what you gave to me, you will have benefit or not. You will know. How will I know? It's not it says, if you are a lessee, you need not go and keep on doing research, rounds of investigation and all for this. If you don't have information to the contrary, you assume that substitution rights are not substantive. Not substantive means substitution right he is having, but the chance of that right getting excised is not there. If it is not there, therefore identified asset is there. So, is real, see, you cannot remember these are rules and all. If you really put yourself in the party's place, you will understand all this naturally. Sir, you are giving me an asset. I want to do accounting for that. But the asset what you gave, you can take back any time it seems and you can give another asset in this place. So, standard says, he is having substitution right. Who? Supplier. If that right is going to be exercised with a high chance, then don't do any lease accounting for that. Normal rent, throw it off into p and account. Generally accepted accounting principle. Lease standard will not apply for you. When when sub supplier ka substitution right is highly likely. Highly likely place where they use the word called as substantive. As substantive, when should I conclude? Two conditions. Number one, that fellow should have the ability. He should have the motive also. Motive and economic incentive. What ability is there? As a lessee, I can also evaluate. But whether he is having incentive or not, how will I evaluate? I might be able to evaluate. I might not be able to evaluate. And it says, don't do any research on that. If you don't have any information, assume that substitution rights are not substantive. Not substantive means identified as it is there. And lease accounting will apply for you like that. C point to rate. The supplier may have a right to substitute the asset with another asset. If this right is substantive, then There is no identified asset. Next. Suppliers substitution right is substantive if the supplier has practical ability to substitute the asset
So I'll tell you a case. You try to understand whether uh, substitution right is substantive or not. Yes, sir. First day, if entire whatever discussion we are doing, no, sir. We are discussing the definition of lease, no? Lease ka definition, when will you evaluate? Inception. First day. Mm -hmm. Exactly, I am telling that case. Yes, sir. <coughs> no, no, that example on the screen. Sir, listen. Sir, you gave a car to me, okay? A car ka lease is for a period of four years. We have a condition that lesser has to replace the asset if there is any damage to the car. Okay? So, is a supplier having right to substitute? Yes, he has a right to substitute if only if there is a damage to the car. Now, if you see this condition, you failed the first point there. Read first point again. The supplier has practical ability to substitute the asset after that throughout the period of usage. You don't have that. You don't have that. You have right to substitute the asset only if some event occurs. If there is no accident, if there is no damage, if the engine is still working in a perfect condition, you don't get a right to substitute. That is not treated as a substantive substitution right. For example, the lease period is 5 years. Sir. What you told me is, after 4 years, for example, you are the owner of the asset, supplier of the asset, I am the lessee. You told that, lease is for a period of 5 years. After 4 years, I might, I might replace this asset with a similar asset. Now, do you have a right to substitute? Yes. But when? Only after 4 years, not before that. So, your right cannot be exercised throughout the period of the usage. You can exercise this right only after a particular date. Sorry, old car, why do you want to substitute, sir, after 4 years? Sir, normally people who have this lot of car fleet and all, what they do is, once the car has got a particular age, they sell off the car, sir. Suppose a car which is 12 years old, that fellow will not maintain that car, he will sell off that car. Why once the car achieve, achieves 14 years, 15 years, sale value will be very, very, very nominal. So you have a car which is 12 years old, which is the fourth year of my lease. If a nice price comes, you will take this car from me, you sell it off. Some other car you will hand it over to me. For that purpose, people have this substitution rights basically. In trading, they will sell off the car, sir. So the point here, what I am trying to establish is, the ability to substitute is something you should have throughout the period of usage not on the happening of a particular event or something. If you are having such right, then it is not substantive. Right. Next point, Lorette. If supplier supplier has a or obligation to Replace the asset only after a particular date or on occurrence of Now there is a new law which is almost certain to come. The law is, once a car is having a life of 15 years or more, it cannot travel on the road. Once it crosses the age of 8 years or 10 years, it can travel, but you have to pay something called as a green tax again. So a new law is almost certain to come. So this government has got one more way of minting money, sir, from the public. That is this new law. Now you observe, so you gave me this car, this car, you have given it to me on lease for a period of 5 years. 
after 3 years a car ka overall 15 years term is getting over so what you will do is you use the asset pay the fine or if i get a nice buyer before the lease term i will take the asset from you and sell it off for you i'll give you a new asset here the supplier is having a substitution right when before that first two years or after the first years whenever a life crosses a particular period once a life crosses 15 years then you might take the asset and sell it off for me but that does not satisfy this point which point throughout the period of this every day you must have this right a right you will not have you will have a right only on attaining a particular age of the car so the point is still not satisfied not substantive so brackets right therefore there is a identified the customer if unable to readily determine whether or substantive or not will have to presume that substitution rights so as a customer you will not literally go and do investigations getting information how will you get benefited all that is not your job Very well, sir. If you have copied this, then go into questions. Go to page number Second question, sir. Please read. Customer XYZ enters into a 10 year contract with supplier ABC for the use of rolling stock specifically designed for customer XYZ. The rolling stock is designed to transport materials used in customer XYZ's production process and is not suitable for use by other customers. The rolling stock is not explicitly specified in the contract, but supplier ABC owns only one rolling stock that is suitable for customer XYZ's usage. If the rolling stock does not operate properly, the contract requires supplier ABC to repair or replace the rolling stock, whether there is an identified asset is the question. Sir, if it has to be an identified asset, total the three points we have discussed, sir. Identified asset must be mentioned either explicitly or implicitly, number one. Number two, it should be physically distinct. And then you have to go and evaluate the substantive substitution rights of the supplier. Three points A. In this, E particular question is based on two points. Number one, here he says, E rolling stock is not explicitly specified in the contract. Even though it is not explicitly specified in the contract, ABC owns only one rolling stock which is going to meet the requirements of the user. Requirements of the user are specified in the contract. Asset is not specified. But as a supplier, you have only one asset which meets that particular requirements. 
so obviously it is implicitly identified is a point second point is supplier has an obligation to substitute the asset when when it does not operate properly not whenever you want not whenever you want whenever supplier want he cannot replace he has to replace when it does not operate properly that means substitution right is there but he does not have that right throughout the period of the usage so substitution right is not substantive so identified asset is there or not there there sir what is rolling stock one asset how does it matter doesn't matter huh? okay rolling stock is good strain you have seen a good strain container is there good strain lo that entire container sir in place of the normal train what you board good strain lo you will have boxes no a box is called as the rolling stock sir why is it called rolling it will roll a ah? roll okay sir normally in liquid type assets they use this uh, around that is actually called as rolling stock anyway leave it you won't get one mark also extra because of that company xyz enters into a 10 year contract with supplier abc for use of a car the specification of the car is specified in the contract brand type color options what should be there everything is mentioned at the inception the car is not yet built whether there is an identified asset yes sir who cares whether the asset is physically existing or not because anyway i am not going to record any accounting today accounting will be done only on the commencement date no so inception date ki even if asset is not existing also it's okay as long as asset ka features are identified in the contract <coughs> scenario a b sir a i am reading an electronic data storage provider supplier provides services through a centralized data center that involve the usage of a specified server i understand sir this fellow he is providing data storage services he is having so many servers where customer ka data is stored in this fellow's location he is letting others use his server and is collecting money for that okay so in this one server number 10 is also there all right the supplier maintains is not may sir many many identical servers in a single accessible location and determines at inception of the contract that it's permitted to and can easily substitute another server without the customer's consent throughout the period of usage moreover the supplier would benefit economically from substituting an alternative asset because doing this would allow the supplier to optimize the performance of its network at only a nominal cost what he is trying to say is sir for example these are the servers what i have in my room sir in various various customers i gave x y z so many customers ki x ki server y ki e server z ka data e server i am storing like that what this supplier told the customers is see any time i want i can take your data from one server i can put it in another server i will definitely give you some space i'll definitely give you some space but e servers might be changed and question very clearly he is telling supplier has got the practical ability to substitute and he is also having a economic incentive sir physically if you know how servers work there should be a bandwidth connection sir high speed and there should be power man power management also involved with that now you see here 30% data is there here 15% data is there here 70% data is there here 20% data is there here 35% data is there of different different customers i don't need five servers to maintain that much data actually so what i do is i shift data into all put together only three servers two servers khali vetkunta sir so that whatever internet speed i have whatever power resources i have i'll dedicatedly give it only to three servers so that it will optimize my performance so the reason economic incentive ni he is telling already in addition the supplier has made clear that 
it has negotiated the right of substitution as an important right in the arrangement and the substitution right affected the pricing of the arrangement what he says is even customers also know that i can substitute the asset with another asset they know that price also is negotiated based on that only fantastic question is whether the substitution rights are substantive and whether there is an identified asset what do you feel sir Subst substitution rights are substantive and therefore there is no identified asset because two conditions are there both are satisfied here scenario b assume the same facts as in scenario a except that server number 10 is customized and the supplier does not have practical ability to substitute the customized asset throughout the period of usage additionally it is unclear whether the supplier would benefit economically from sourcing a similar alternative asset whether the substitution rights are substantive and whether there is an identified asset what is this case in this case what is happening is i have been given a dedicated server which is customized he has a right to substitute all that is there but the chance of substitution is very very less because his ability to substitute is less why this is a customized asset moreover whether he will really economically benefit from this or not also we cannot say therefore our two conditions are not satisfied our two conditions fail at substitution rate is there but it is not substantive if it is not substantive identified asset is there so scenario b lo identified asset e above case so please correct it sir uh, and conclude that there is no identified asset wait a moment i think the answer is customer does not have a right to use an identified ah, okay fine here is the main answer sir here you don't correct it actually sir that fellow wrote unnecessarily one point sir okay here he already wrote clearly answer actually got over here only sir he said however if customer does not know whether our two conditions are satisfied or not then customer will believe that substitution rights are not substantive and therefore he will treat that there is a identified a point he did not ask sir actually this will honor sir discussed that and confused okay no problem customer xyz enters into a 15 years contract with supplier abc for the right to use five fibers within a fiber cable between mumbai and pune so a data transfer key fiber cables they use sir ఆ ఫైబర్ కేబుల్స్లో ఒక బిగ్ కేబుల్లో ఒక ఫైవ్ కేబుల్స్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ దాట్ హూ ఈస్ హ్యావింగ్ ఎ రైట్ టు యూజ్ కస్టమర్ ఎక్స్వై సెట్ బిట్వీన్ దిస్ ఏరియా ముంబై అండ్ పుణె ది కాంట్రాక్ట్ ఐడెంటిఫైస్ ఫైవ్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ద కేబుల్స్ ట్వంటీ ఫైవ్ ఫైబర్స్ ఫర్ యూజ్ బై కస్టమర్ ఎక్స్వై సెట్ దట్ మీన్స్ దెర్ ఈస్ ఎ బిగ్ ఫైబర్ కేబుల్ సార్ విచ్ రన్స్ బిట్వీన్ ముంబై టు పుణె ఇన్ దిస్ total 25 cables are there e 25 cables oka so 5 cables are dedicated towards a particular customer the five fibers dedicated solely to customers xyz data for the duration of the contract term assume that supplier abc does not have a substantive substitution right fine whether there is an identified asset sir e fibers ka purpose is what transferring data from one place to another place sir our data very fastly quickly it will be transferred okay now here even though 25 cables are there between mumbai and pune which five cables xyz is having right is clearly identified so they are physically distinct separated separately identified physically distinct therefore there is a identified asset moreover substitution rights are not substantive also the said fibers are identified assets because they are physically distinct and explicitly specified in the contract customer xyz enters into a 10 year contract with supplier abc for the right to transport oil from india to bangladesh to supplier abc's pipeline so here the work is transporting oil through a pipeline so pipeline is a asset sir the contract provides that customer will have right of 
नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द पाइपलाइन कैपेसिटी थ्रू द टर्म ऑफ द अरेजमेंट फेदर देर इज एन ऐडेंटिफाइड असेट सर एंटर पाइप लाइन लो विच नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट एंड दे डिड नॉट आइडेंटिफाई विच मींस फिजिकली डिस्टिंक्ट एन ए पॉइंट यू हैव फेल्ड बट यू स्टिल कॉल इट एज एन आइडेंटिफाइड असेट बिकॉज़ यू हैव कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड टू ऑब्टेन सब्सटेंशियली ऑल ऑफ द कैपेसिटी ऑफ द असेट आ पॉइंट विल फॉल अनदर सिनेरियो assume the same fact as in scenario a except that the customer has a right to use only 65% of the pipeline's capacity throughout the term of the arrangement sir 65% is substantially there is no doubt but is it substantially all of the capacity no therefore physically distinct are failed substantially all also failed therein there is no identified asset abc enters into a contract with xyz which grants abc exclusive rights to use a specific grain facility over a 5 years period in the months of may and june okay correctly understand sir they get a right on a facility grain facility in a warehouse building sir they get a right for how many years 5 years not full 5 years each year lo only may and june During these months, ABC has right to decide which crops are placed in storage and when to remove them. So, decision-making power is there with the customer ABC. XYZ also provides loading and unloading services for the warehouse activities. That's irrelevant. During the other ten months, sorry. During the other ten months each year, XYZ has the right to determine how the warehouse will be used. Which party has the right to control the use of identified asset during the period of usage? What is the period of usage here between these people? Two months in each year for a period of five years. And the overall go ten months. As far as e ten months is concerned, is customer ABC having right to control the usage of the asset? Yes. All economic benefits from the usage of the warehouse during the ten months period belongs to ABC. ABC also have decision making rights on that asset during that ten months period. That's all. Point is satisfied. E question is based on a simple point that a lease period of usage, whatever is there, that need not be consecutive periods. It can be non-consecutive periods also. So. Company MNO enters into a fifteen-year contract with power company PQR. Called two ras concern. to purchase all of the electricity produced by a new solar farm okay wait there mno is entering into a contract with the power company power company obviously manufacture electricity only no a electricity all electricity mno only will buy that to electricity is produced by a solar farm solar farm means you might have seen off lit photos and all of this is solar panels will be there no like that some thousands of solar panels will be there in a location like how we do agriculture like that big land they will take all the solar panels are kept there energy we take and there is a separate mechanism for converting that into electricity so are the solar farm sir of course pqr owns a solar farm and will receive tax credits relating to construction and ownership of the solar farm and mno and a user will receive renewable energy credits that accrues that accrue from the usage of solar farm sir i can do carbon emissions some limit is there but carbon emissions when will it come when i use electricity or when i used coal based thing then carbon will come out but what type of electricity i am using now solar energy so i am reducing my carbon emissions now i will be getting certificates he certificates again i can sell it he says our benefit is coming to the user he is asking who has the right to substantial benefits from the solar farm sir right to control the use and a points lo two conditions are there first condition is the customer should have right to obtain substantially all of the economic benefits arising from the usage of the asset usage of the asset benefits lo again primary benefit ante goods and services by products lo this type of energy credits and all or you can sublease this asset to somebody and again from them also you can get the benefit that is also covered benefits that are accrued because of the ownership of the asset are not to be considered for the purpose of deciding 
whether substantial benefits are enjoyed by the customer or not. So, in this case, two type of benefits question they gave. One is tax credit for owning uh, for uh, ownership of the solar asset. Number one. Uh, number two is uh, uh, this carbon credits for using of the solar farm. E using of the solar farm, low carbon benefits, whatever are there, energy credits. That who is getting? MNO is getting. MNO is user only, no. So he is substantially getting all the benefits that are relevant for making the evaluation of whether the contract is a lease or not. The tax credits do not relate to the use of solar farm and therefore are not considered in this assessment. Electricity anyway belongs to them, which is a primary output. Now, renewable energy credits, that is a byproduct from the use of this. E both are enjoyed by the customer MN only. Already, first he gave no electricity anyway, he is only taking. Extra e byproducts also, he only is taking. That's good enough. Customer X enters into a contract with supplier Y to use a vehicle for a five years period. Mm. Okay. Took a vehicle. Okay. The vehicle is identified in the contract. Nice. Supplier Y cannot substitute another vehicle unless the specified vehicle is not operational. Not operational. What is it? So, substitution rate is there or substitution obligation is there, but is it substantive? Not substantive. Under the contract. Three cases are there, sir. Customer X operates the vehicle. That means he only drives or direct other people to operate the vehicle. Sir, it, is it as good as he is having a right to decide? Right. Next. Customer X decided how to use the vehicle, of course, within the contract limitations. For example, throughout the period of usage, customer X decides where the vehicle goes as well as when or whether it is used or not and what purpose kit is used for customer X. Sorry, used for after that. Customer X can also change these decisions throughout the period of usage. The second point is giving you more clarity that a customer X is having full decision making right. When to use, how to use, whether it should be used or not. All these decisions he is having. In fact, he is having power to even change these decisions also. Supplier Y prohibits certain uses of the vehicle. Example, moving it overseas. Just because I give you a car, somehow you should not travel to Pakistan and leave it there. And modifications to the vehicle to protect its interest in the asset. Whether customer X has the right to direct the usage of the vehicle throughout the period of usage. So yes, a last point of whatever restriction is there, that's called as the protective right. Protective right, of course, supplier will have some protective right because he's a owner of the asset. So that right's presence is no way interfering with your ability to control the usage of the identified asset. Entity A contracts with the supplier H to manufacture parts in a facility. So careful with this question, guys. Entity A customer, sir, supplier is H. So parts manufacturing which we are talking. Entity A designed the facility and provided its specifications. Mm -hmm. Supplier H owns the facility and the land. Entity A specifies how many parts it needs and when it needs the parts to be available. So quantity, delivery date, entity A will tell. Supplier H will operate the machinery and makes all operating decisions including how and when the parts are to be produced as long as it meets the contractual requirements to deliver the specified number on the specified date. Assuming H cannot substitute the facility and hence is an identified asset. Yes. Which party has a right to control the usage of an identified asset during the period of usage? Sir, first understand the question before giving an answer. Sir, I am customer, you are supplier. You are having a manufacturing facility. In manufacturing facility, I only designed. I only designed. But you are the owner of this. With, between me and you, the contract is I will specify how many number of units I want and by what time I want. I will specify that to you. Your job is to manufacture that and give it to me. When you will manufacture, how you will manufacture, our rights are there with you only. I cannot operate the asset also. I can only specify what I want. You will operate the asset. 
ఆ హౌ టు ఆపరేట్ వెన్ టు ఆపరేట్ యువర్ డెసిషన్ ఓన్లీ బట్ యూ విల్ డెలివర్ ద గుడ్స్ టు మీ ఇది మ్యాటర్స్ ఇన్ దిస్ రైట్ టు కంట్రోల్ ద యూస్ ఆఫ్ ది అసెట్ యాజ్ ఎ కస్టమర్ ఐఎమ్ ఐ హ్యావింగ్ ఆర్ ఐఎమ్ నాట్ హ్యావింగ్ అది క్వశ్చన్ ఐఎమ్ ఐ హ్యావింగ్ ఆర్ నాట్ హ్యావింగ్ సార్ యూ టోల్డ్ నో సార్ కస్టమర్ డిజైన్ చేస్తే కస్టమర్ ఈజ్ హ్యావింగ్ ఓకే లెట్స్ గో బ్యాక్ స్లోలీ బ్యాక్ సైడ్ లీజ్ డెఫినె లీజ్ డెఫినేషన్లో రైట్ టు కంట్రోల్ ద యూస్ ఆఫ్ ఐడెంటిఫైడ్ అసెట్ అనే వర్డ్ ఇస్ దర్ రైట్ టు కంట్రోల్ అనే పాయింట్ ఈజ్ సాటిస్ఫైడ్ ఇఫ్ టూ కండిషన్స్ ఆర్ సాటిస్ఫైడ్ ఫర్ ద టూ కండిషన్స్ సబ్స్టాన్షియలీ ఆల్ ఎకనామిక్ బెనిఫిట్ షుడ్ గో టు ద కస్టమర్ నెంబర్ వన్ నెంబర్ టూ ఈజ్ కస్టమర్ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ రైట్ టు డైరెక్ట్ ద యూసేజ్ ఆఫ్ ది అసెట్ రైట్ టు డైరెక్ట్ ద యూసేజ్ ఆఫ్ ది అసెట్ అంటే డెసిషన్ మేకింగ్ రైట్ వెన్ టు యూస్ హౌ టు యూస్ హూ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ ద పవర్ కస్టమర్ షుడ్ హ్యావ్ ద పవర్ ఇఫ్ సప్లైర్ ఈజ్ హ్యావింగ్ దర్ పవర్ దెన్ ఈ రైట్ టు కంట్రోల్ అనే పాయింట్ ఈజ్ ఫెయిల్డ్ సార్ ఓకే దెన్ వీ వెంట్ అండ్ డిస్కస్ వన్ మోర్ నోట్ వాట్ ఈస్ దట్ నోట్ వాజ్ ఇఫ్ హౌ టు యూజ్ ద సెట్ అండ్ వెన్ టు యూజ్ ద సెట్ ఈస్ ఆల్రెడీ ప్రీ డిటర్మైండ్ దెన్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు సీ హూ ఈస్ ఆపరేటింగ్ ద సెట్ ఇఫ్ కస్టమర్ ఈజ్ ఆపరేటింగ్ ద సెట్ దెన్ దెర్ ఈస్ నో ప్రాబ్లమ్ రైట్ టు డైరెక్ట్ ద యూసేజ్ ఈస్ దేర్ నో సార్ సప్లైర్ ఓన్లీ ఈజ్ ఆపరేటింగ్ ద సెట్ ఇన్ దట్ కేస్ హ్యావ్ టు గో అండ్ సీ డిడ్ ద కస్టమర్ డిజైన్ ద అసెట్ ఆర్ నాట్ so customer designing the asset and a discussion when did it come sir when how and for what purpose the asset must be used should be predetermined in that case god sir in that case god sir if it was that case here you observe supplier h operates the machinery and makes all operating decisions including how and when parts are to be produced if supplier is making how and what decisions regarding the asset will you call it as predetermined no asala discussion go go sir mira note point you should not read now very tempting question sir because customer sorry supplier only is operating he told customer only designed you told it's very likely that you go and fall in that note point but a note point ke heading you should not forget a note point ke when you should go when the usage is predetermined ida case ga sir usage is not predetermined if you don't fall into that note category and rights to went and how to use asset is not there with the customer then you failed that entire clause itself there is no identified asset in this case good question i think very good you should just understand that a note you should not apply here next entity l enters into a five years contract with a company a over the usage of an identified ship sir did you understand the previous question ka discussion whatever note point we said where customer designing the asset is enough on a point a point will be applicable only when when and how of the asset is predetermined and customer is not operating the asset supplier is operating the asset in e case of supplier only is operating the asset customer only designed the asset but you still a note point you should not apply because in this scenario how and when the asset will be used is not predetermined that is left for a decision making and our decision making supplier fellow is making it off if supplier makes a decision making obviously customer does not have right to direct the usage of the asset and hence a point gets failed there is no identified asset sir then what is this agreement sir goods sale agreement i agree to buy goods you agree to sell goods i place an order you give the goods normal sale agreement sir if ide samlo one extra point sir if they if they tell you that ఆ అసెట్ కా హౌ అండ్ వెన్ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో ప్రీ డిటర్మైండ్ దెన్ ఇట్ డెఫినెట్లీ సాటిస్ఫైస్ ద డెఫినేషన్ ఆర్ ద కండిషన్ ఆఫ్ రైట్ ఆఫ్ కంట్రోల్ ద ద యూస్ ఆఫ్ అన్ ఐడెంటిఫైల్ అసెట్ అండ్ దే ఫర్ ఇట్ మైట్ ఇవెన్చువలీ బికమ్ ఏ లీజ్ ట్రాన్సాక్షన్ సీ ద వేరియేషన్ సార్ ఆ వన్ పాయింట్ యూ అకౌంటింగ్ ఇట్ యాజ్ ఎ లీజ్డ్ అసెట్ అది పోయి సింప్లీ గూడ్స్ పర్చేస్ సేల్కి వచ్చేసింది సార్ ఆ వన్ పాయింట్ సింపుల్ సార్ ఇఫ్ యూ డోంట్ హ్యావ్ కంట్రోల్ ఓవర్ ద అసెట్ with what face will i recognize asset there is an asset asset only is used for the purpose of my goods agreed but i don't have control over that asset when control over that asset is not there how can i recognize it as an asset in my books of accounts asset fundamental definition is what control over a resource a control ante decision making power e a power i don't have i don't have how can i call it as my asset entity l enters into a 5 years contract with company a over the usage of an identified ship entity l decides whether and what cargo will be transported and when and to which ports the ship will sail throughout the period of usage 
subject to restriction specified in the contract. Sir, L is a customer. L only will decide whether or not it will travel, what cargo it will transport, which area it will go. All that customer only is deciding. This and some restrictions are also there. It seems our restrictions. Gunji is telling that the restrictions prevent entity sailing the ship into water set high risk of piracy or carrying explosive materials as cargo. So the owner of the ship obviously is putting a condition that don't carry bombs on this. Why he is afraid of bombs? Ah, huh? no, he is afraid of his ship. Metals both they know, the driver both and other men, sir, ship gal both, sir. He is worried about his ship safety, sir. He says, don't carry explosive metals. Don't go to that parts of the sea where pirates are there. There will be theft. The people who come to steal, they won't steal cargo. Ship will be sir, sir. So that is his worry. Don't go there. Company A, company enter the supplier. Operates and maintains the ship and is responsible for safe passage. Who has the right to direct the usage of the ship during the period of the use? Customer or supplier? Customer only. Only the customer. Whoever is having the right to decide, that fellow obviously have the control there. Okay, question number 12. Can't do right now, for that time is there. What if you. Enough? Huh? Sure, huh? One small. Okay. <laughs> one second, one second, one second. Evening also we will do, sir, don't worry. Sayantanda goes to Okay, anyway, that's all. Leave.